Good morning to all. Thank you for coming at today's meeting and discussion <laughs> after the fourth year campaign, Impact, Choose Life. The discussion will be organized, is organized between the HERA Association and the non-governmental ESE for Emancipation and Equality of the Women in Macedonia. The goal of this event is to introduce you with the findings from two studies during July and August after the new act on termination of pregnancy was adopted regarding per attitudes among the general public and the gynecologists regarding abortion and the new uh, legal amendments and changes. This public discussion will introduce presentation of findings on the impact in the past four years since the government campaign against abortion was initiated. At the meantime, ASA also had a study regarding the spending of the governmental campaign, Choose Life. You have a right to cho choice, Choose Life. Uh, in addition, with this uh, discussion, we would like to initiate a platform where we will discuss certain steps, further steps for future strategies for the civil organizations to respect the basic rights of women and the right to free choice. Apart from the NGO, this group has invited the media as well to take active participation in the active discussion as well as health workers and their associations and representatives of the UN agencies. This program you have in front of you. I have with me here Biljana Ugurovska who was a researcher of the quantitative study we have implemented in July and August regarding the positions, the attitudes of the general population and the gynecologists. And Borian Jovanovsky, Pavlovsky from ETSE to discuss about the spendings regarding the campaign, the government campaign. First, I would like to welcome Biljana Ugurovska to present the findings from HERA study and in addition we have shared the publication which may be useful for you to get uh, informed about the findings and the conclusions from our study. Uh, I would not like to waste uh, the time anymore. I would like to invite Biljana to present the findings. Hello to everybody. My name is Biljana Ugurovska, researcher, and today, in brief, I will present you the findings from the quantitative research uh, performed among citizens and gynecologists in Macedonia. The debate regarding the abortion in the past four years has become really a current affairs uh, topic and it began in 2008-2009 when there was a wave of printed posters presenting upsetting pictures of fetuses with the slogan abortion is murder. These posters uh, uh, made uh, NGOs react and in 2010-2011 intensively at the televisions we had a television campaign Choose Life, you have a right to choice, 
uh, composed of six videos uh, with titles Young Arguments to describe the risks from abortion, fetus, wealth, where the family is the largest wealth one can have, then parent, however you are, your child will like you, and Beethoven. These are the six videos which were covered by the study. I must emphasize that in September this year we had two additional videos part of this campaign but were not covered by our study because the stage of collecting data was uh, ended. One of the videos also contains upsetting uh, photos regarding which the Broadcasting Council uh, issued a restriction for broadcasting before midnight. The goal of this campaign, according to the uh, public bid of the government, is to inform about the living organism uh, that is developing in the body of the mother and to stress that uh, we are taking a life of already formed organism by uh, aborting it. Uh, then to point out about the health complication, the mental uh, complications after the abortion and to stress that the creation of new life and uh, one owns child is a God's blessing and the best thing one can uh, see in life. Apart from the media campaign, there were changes in the legislation on abortion and there were three articles uh, modified uh, which uh, require compulsory written request for termination of pregnancy by the woman. Uh, then there is uh, obligatory uh, counseling for possible advantages of continuation of pregnancy and the risks uh, from abortion. And after the counseling, counseling we have compulsory period of, of waiting three-day waiting in order to have the medical intervention. All of these modifications, including the fact that there is no published research uh, at all that would completely focus on research of the attitudes towards abortion, to some extent dictates and determines the nat nature of this study, and the goal is descriptive. This research has a goal to have a quantitative description of the positions, the attitudes, to research the effects of the TV campaign Choose Life, You Have a Right to Choice, and to make research into the attitudes regarding new legal changes uh, on abortion. The first goal has been researched into the general uh, uh, position towards abortion, the attitude regarding the risks from the legal abortions, the medical aspects, and condemnation. Condemnation. condemnation of the woman that has performed abortion. Then we discuss the awareness regarding the campaign among the general public, the communication effect, uh, the messages it transfers, and how, what's the impact on the attitudes on abortion that the citizens have. Regarding the new legal changes, we discuss the uh, information to the citizens, whether the citizens and the gynecologists are uh, informed at all and what is their position. As uh, I already mentioned, this is quantitative research implemented by a telephone interview. The research was uh, carried out by professionally trained uh, researchers. Uh, actually, this is, there are two parts. One, uh, a research among the general public and the other with the gynecologists. And we have two different questionnaires for this. For the general population, we have 25 questions, for the gynecologists, 14, and each questionnaire contains four opened questions. 
Uh, the sample is consists of 1,252 respondents from the general population, a statistical sample from uh, sex, age, ethnical uh, background, place of living and region, and the uh, uh, questionnaire. The sample for gynecologists is 55. Now we will see the results from the general population. We shall start with the section concerning the attitudes towards abortion. First, uh, we researched the general attitude, which was measured through the question how much do respondents agree or do not agree with the claim that women in Republic of Macedonia should uh, make uh, the decision about abortion on her own or on their own. 67% or the majority of the respondents th uh, think that uh, women the woman should make an independent uh, choice concerning whether to conduct abortion or not. And most often, as an argument for the attitude, uh, they listed various uh, reasons, such as they respecting uh, the physical and uh, psychological integrity, as well as the right to free choice. The respondents said that uh, women should decide on her own, because only a woman can decide about her pregnancy, because it concerns only her body and her life and only the woman can know whether she is ready to be a mother or not. Unlike them, the other 20, the, uh, the minority of the respondents, so 23%, considered that women, the woman should not uh, make, her, make the decision whether to conduct abortion or not independently, and they consider this because they think that the decision should be made in co collaboration uh, with the partner. This was the most frequent reason for their attitudes. Concerning the position towards the legality, position towards the legal abortion, most of the respondents uh, considered that abortion uh, has a certain risks. And 67% think that uh, abortion is somewhat risky, there's somewhat, uh, uh, some risk, whereas 23% think that there is high risk. And f for a certain po a portion, they think that uh, uh, abortion does not uh, carry any uh, medical risks. Because the consequences from the legal abortion, and there were eight uh, such uh, possible impacts, uh, such as uh, infection, infati uh, infertility, severe psychological impact, uh, uh, injuries to the uterus, complications from anesthetic, sepsis, uh, removal of the uterus, and death of uh, pregnant women. And if we can conclude from the results that the citizens in the Republic of Macedonia expect that the most often health impact or complication may, might be infections, infertility, severe psychological consequences and injuries to the uterus. This chart uh, uh, show, shows interesting results and you can see that the percentage of the responses by the respondents who say they don't know or didn't want to provide an answer is quite high and it uh, which is from 23% from consequences of infections to 40% uh, from for the answer concerning sep appearance of se sepsis, which shows that the majority of the citizens don't have sufficient information concerning the possible health impact from conducting the procedure of legal abortion. The third aspect, uh, which was used to uh, research uh, the attitudes towards abortion is the condemnation of the woman who has undertaken abortion. Even though this condemnation is not uh, dominantly present, there is uh, a presence of the condemnation among the population of Republic of Macedonia because 39% consider that uh, women, that the women who have uh, carried out abortion, have made the wrong choice. Concerning the social, from the social demographic. Uh, analysis of the attitudes towards abortion, you can see that demographic variables in a way affect, affect to having certain attitudes towards abortion. Here in the results <coughs> we have carried out a demographic profile of the respondents, which in comparison to other demographic groups 
uh, consider that a woman should not uh, decide on her own about abortion, that legal abortion is risky and the women who have, con made, uh, have had abortion have made a wrong choice. Most often these are demographic groups from 15 to 24 years of age, respondents from Albanian ethnic communities, from rural, from rural areas, from the Polog region in Macedonia, uh, demographic group with uh, primary education, uh, those with a Muslim religious uh, a religious uh, background and those which have a low monthly income up to 12,000 dinars. Now we move, we'll move to the second section of the general population research. These are the study of the effects of the TV campaign, Choose Life, You Have a Right of Choice. The purpose behind uh, this part of the research was to uh, learn how Macedonian citizens experience or what are the experiences of the Macedonian citizens and their response to this campaign and what messages uh, do they feel it conveys. We can, we can say that 60, up to 61% of all respondents uh, have uh, think that they have uh, achieved a high level of awareness by this campaign, which is not an insignificant number uh, at all. This means that 61% of the respondents said they have seen at least one of the videos of the campaign, public com TV campaign, Ch Choose Life, You Have the Right of Choice. From these uh, respondents who have watched these videos, 53 of them, 50%, 53 of them have stated that these, they like the videos. This means that the basic precondition for any uh, advertising communication is has been met and this is likability because through likability likability enables the conveyance of a certain message to raise awareness about a certain topic and of course it is a necessary precondition for changing the opinion of the citizens the main message which the TV campaign Choose Life, Have a Right of Choice is conveying is not to have an abortion. Then to uh, create a family uh, with multiple children as well uh, ed education about the abortion risks. A small, uh, lesser number of the respondents have said that they think that uh, the messages are conservative which pressurize the women not to have an abortion. 63% of the respondents agree with the messages conveyed by the TV campaign which are listed uh, on the chart concerning the impact uh, of the attitudes of uh, impact on the attitudes towards abortion only 11% uh, of the citizens ha have said that they have changed uh, ha changed their position or attitudes uh, under the influence of the TV campaign choose life have a right of choice this is a self assessment self evaluation and this was the only way for us to assess the impact of this campaign because we don't have any data about the attitudes of the citizens prior to the beginning of this TV campaign. So we may expect that this percentage to be, percentage to be higher because the process of changing of attitudes is a long-term process which very often uh, is unconscious, uh, goes on the unconscious level and is impacted by many different factors. Out of those 11% of citizens who have changed their attitudes after the campaign have stated that they have changed their attitudes because they were informed through this campaign that abortion uh, carries certain risks or that uh, they had or, or they were informed uh, in any extent about abortion that's why they changed their opinions. Concerning the legal changes uh, concerning the process of abortion only 37% uh, of the respondents have been uh, are informed have been aware about the changes and amendments made to the law on abortion out of these 37% half of them or 50% think that the changes and amendments to the law on abortion reduce the right of free choice of women while 28% think that uh, these changes will not affect the right of choice uh, for abortion to of women. <laughs> now we move on to the results of the research among the gynecologists. Uh, we have uh, uh, had 55 uh, gyne gynecologists included in this research of, from uh, all towns in Macedonia. 
out 67 percent of the gynecologists consider that abortion should be uh, left to free choice of women because uh, women would the woman should decide about herself and about her own life and she is responsible for her own body and for her own health according to the majority of the gynecologists 45 percent think that uh, legal abortion is a somewhat risky medical intervention while for 31 percent uh, they don't consider that this is a risky medical intervention concerning the health impact uh, following uh, the, the carrying out of a legal abortion gynecologists consider that the most frequent uh, consequences are infections injuries to the uh, uterus and complications from the anesthetics Maybe it would be good to note here that their answers usually vary between the answer almost never or very rarely. 93% of all gynecologists are informed about the legal changes to the law on abortion, while 71% of them think that these changes will uh, um, will uh, make the access to the uh, to the free access to abortion much more difficult Concer concerning about how these legal changes to the uh, procedure of abortion will affect the attitudes uh, of women towards uh, uh, protection of health of women in this the opinions here are divided where 31 percent considered that uh, uh, 35 percent considered that uh, 31 percent considered that protection of uh, uh, the health of women will be reduced because they expect that the number of illegal abortions will increase, while 35% of the gynecologists who think that the health, women, women's health protection will be increased uh, with the, the new changes, they think this will be as a result of the reduction of the number of illegal abortions and because there will be greater control on the conducting of abortion. And with this, I will finish my presentation. I to thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Biljana. I would like to invite Borian to present uh, the ESSE study, the research, and then we will have questions, comments, and discussion regarding the two presentations. Borian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Borian. As you already mentioned, the association ESA, in this initiative in cooperation with HERA, conducted a research to assess how much uh, government money is spent for the campaign Choose Life, We Have a Right to Choose, and to compare uh, the spendings for preventing preventive health programs and how to use this money more efficiently in order to improve uh, women, female health and the quality of life of women in Macedonia and how to have more advantageable uh, spending of uh, these uh, funds to have a regular reduction of the need for abortion rather than stigmatizing and discriminating women in order to determine the costs we uh, required information uh, from the Public Pro uh, Procurement Bureau about the contracts signed regarding the payments and the public procurements and contracts regarding the campaign Choose Life, You Have a Right to Choose. And I must uh, emphasize that for the other TV campaigns the government is applying, data can be found on this webpage. When we implemented a procedure for access to public information according to the law on uh, free access to public information, we found silence in the government institutions, the secretariat of the government. They did not submit or deliver any information. We appealed to the Commission uh, for protection of the right to public information. We also received a, a letter without any data and we have a still going on this procedure. We have complained to the administrative inspectorate but we have uh, total silence by the government institutions regarding the funds they spent in 2009 until today. However, 
when this campaign was initiated in 2009, the web page of the Public Procurement Bureau had some documents we have downloaded, fortunately, however, they were removed uh, since then and they have not been uh, uploaded. And this data from 2009, which is not publicly available anymore, says that the government has spent 36 million dinars for implementation of this campaign and on grounds of this data and information from the Public Procurement Bureau that the government spends about 36 about 36 million dinners for each campaign for family values entrepreneurship they are more or less the same we can uh, assume uh, that uh, for this campaign as well this government each year since 2009 until 2013 has spent annually 36 million dinners uh, from the budget, uh, the central budget, which is 180 million dinars for four years. Uh, uh, the Macedonian radio and television, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, provided uh, us with information regarding their participation. The, the videos are broadcast free of charge on the national television with increase of the total minutes of broadcasting, 1 hour 9 minutes 49 seconds in 2011 and uh, 5 hours 26 minutes and 19 seconds in 2012. We made an uh, estimate how much one minute costs and uh, the Macedonian television has donated regarding uh, marketing space about 1 million dinars. As I said before, in order to see the full meaning on how, what can we do with these uh, funds, we made a comparative analysis of these funds with the preventive health, uh, having in mind the health uh, care budget, uh, the budget of the preventive health services of the Ministry of Health, the 36 million dinars for this campaign are 10% of the total budget. It's 360 million dinars and more. When we compare these two programs of the Ministry of Health, Prevention Health, Health Care and Protection of Mothers and Children, and the program for Early Detection of Malignant Diseases, we see how much money has been uh, dedicated to the campaign Choose Life, uh, You Have a Right to Choose. These assumptions are 36 million dinars. And these are real, in, uh, however, the budget information is real, it's not assumptions. In 2012, this program spent 10 million dinners, which is three times less than the program, than the campaign and the program for mothers and children has specific goals to uh, improve the health of mothers and children, uh, perinatal uh, mortality. When we discuss the malignant diseases, on the other hand, which are very specific for the female health, the component for early detection of breast cancer and uh, uh, cervical cancer, the government has spent about 20 million dinars in 2012, which is, an, uh, again, 16 million dinars less than the campaign for abortion. This program for uh, early detection of malignant diseases has a goal to reduce the mortality from these uh, most common malignant diseases found in the female population, leading causes for mortality among the female population, both in Macedonia and uh, globally. If we take the budgets of the two programs, which are more specifically intended for female health, these are 30 million dinars. We are still missing certain funds in comparison to the abortion campaign, 36 million dinars, which is very clear that these funds for the campaign should be earmarked to other more advantageable programs for protection and care of the female health. And we know that our state, as other states, has limited budgets and therefore these funds should be reallocated for more advantageable uh, uh, objectives for female health care. We have also specific proposals rather than this campaign for stigmatizing the government can uh, allocate the, these uh, funds for educational campaign for reproductive health and contraception in order to reduce, uh, to increase the, the, the rate of contraception use and therefore reduce the rate of abortion. Uh, 
uh, a campaign for education of women for the need of regular preventive gynecological uh, examinations may be implemented in order to uh, improve their health. Uh, this uh, calculation was done on grounds of the document for availability of contraception. These money, 36 million dinars, the government can provide free of charge contraception for 60,000 women, 6,000 women at annual level and improve their health, reduce the rate of abortion uh, until this uh, free of charge contraception is uh, allocated. Both programs for female health was a, were focus of analysis and interest of our work and we urge the government to allocate this 36 million dinars to the program for active health protection of mothers and children and the program for early detection of malignant uh, diseases to cover a larger number of women, uh, the marginalized groups of women, Roma women and so on. Of course, we require more transparency and accountability from the government and the government and public institutions. We require these documents, such as contracts for public uh, procurement, to be publicly available at the Public Procurement Bureau website and all other public institutions, and not to face silence by the government institutions when we require documents for their spendings, for public finance. Thank you very much. I like, like to thank Borjan for his presentation. I think now we can go continue and move to uh, to a discussion of these topics uh, based on the two presentation that uh, uh, we witnessed uh, earlier. Of course, if you have co any questions, comments, as well as uh, you are free to discuss on the general topic uh, that we have opened today. So I would like to open the floor to discussion who would like to break the ice and provide his comments or her comments. Paul. Uh, good, good morning. My name is Ivana Jordanovska from Young European Federalists. This is a really wonderful research. I don't, I don't know whether I'm the only one who gets excited uh, when reads this research. This is highly informative and necessary research. What was most interesting for me, besides the need for sexual education, which uh, it's interesting that it's required for the younger population rather than the older adult population. And this is the inconsistency between the professional uh, professionals, the gynecologists cannot agree on what is the, what are the worst impact or risks from abortion, which in my opinion sounds, I don't know what will the associations of gynecologists may uh, state, it seems that there are differing professional standards among gynecologists, whether this is really the case, or maybe there are other reasons for having such results from the research, I am I don't know. Another interesting fact for me is uh, the high percentage uh, of people who believe that uh, uh, infections and injuries to the uterus are one of the most frequent uh, consequences from abortion. It might be, but we also have a, a lobbying for chemical uh, abortion instead of the invasive method to have a chemical abortion maybe to promote something like this I think civic organizations may start this initiative or to start a discussion on this topic to be supported and promoted by the professional public uh, if they agree on the benefits of such chemical type of abortion and to initiate a, a discussion or dialogue in the in the uh, in the uh, in the public, uh, what are the benefits from this? I think that in other Balkan countries, this is a practice, and we can use their experiences as co as a, a, me a basis for comparison. Com comparing about what you mentioned about chemical or medi medicamental medicamentous abortion, I would like to state that there is already an initiative which has been 
submit uh, submitted to the professional association of gynecologists since February to change the new clinical instructions for termination of abortion where the medicamental or chemical abortion is provided as an option if uh, women decide if the woman decides to choose it instead of the inv invasive uh, uh, procedure but we have no information from the association of gynecologists whether they accept this, whether it's acceptable, they don't even, even provide an opinion. We know that the Minister of Health, uh, during one occasion, has mentioned that the medicamentous abortion might mean, it, the introduction of this type of abortion might be uh, mean too great of a liberalization uh, in the field of abortion that women might think it's too freely available uh, in comparison to the other type of procession, but we have no information from the association concerning the impact and consequences uh, following uh, the procedure of abortion. Unfortunately, I don't remember whether Macedonia exists. We have Professor Filipowski from the Association of Family Gynecologists. He may say better whether there are certain standards concerning the categorization of the impact from abortion a, in with regards to whether they are risky, a, a higher level, low level of risk, uh, uh, no risk, uh, because in other countries uh, it is well categorized which uh, consequences from abortion might occur in what events, what are the percentages, and maybe these uh, different attitudes towards abortion uh, derive from the fact that there is no a more harmonized uh, medical standard or protocol which can be used uh, by gynecologists uh, to uh, agree on the attitudes and the standards. Do we have any other comments? Silva Pesic. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the, the two organizations and as well as all the participants in this research because I think this type of information is uh, vital for uh, for for our to help us to uh, fight against the stigmatization and all the all the consequences from this uh, discussion or impact from this discussion for for on the topic of prevention of, of the uh, determination of abortion. This is what we need. We uh, specific research with data which are presented and focused in this manner as, it was, as we saw previously, this will enable us to see the real picture of the situation. And we as civic organizations, because I don't see that any other institutions or bodies uh, make any greater efforts to fight this uh, negative phenomena that we have been witnessing for the past period. This is what we need, or this is what you need as NGOs to strengthen uh, your uh, capacities and uh, representation efforts. Concerning the risks, uh, which was mentioned in the presentation of, uh, of Biljana Ogoroska, I think it was most too, uh, focused too much on the medical risks from abortion, while there is no research about the risks from other health interventions. What I could uh, follow in the public discussions and, if, and uh, dialogues that were carried out, some of them were mentioned, but we still don't know what is the risk on the health from any possible intervention. And we are, we are, we are dragged into discussions which uh, have a more moralizing uh, character rather than a, a medical character. Recently, I have read information from an NGO from Prilip, I think Roma SOS. They have succeeded uh, in winning a lawsuit in the courts concerning a case of uh, unconscionable, of malpractice in uh, the treatment of a woman with a fracture. It's a Roma woman. I, I, I couldn't see from the information whether it concerned discrimination or not, but they have won the case in favor of the plaintiff because of inadequate uh, medical care which of course had an impact on her long-term health so this is a this is a simple simple example of the impact from a simple case of uh, uh, treating a fracture and very few NGOs deal with the health of right of to health 
these topics. So I think it might be difficult to conduct research in this direction. I cannot have, make any promises, but I, mean, I can discuss with my colleagues from the United Nations if there is a, their interest or if you consider that this type of research might help to uh, help in your work. Uh, maybe we can, uh, we can be available and provide you with assistance. Usually, I, I don't want to go too much in detail because usually I talk quite a lot. Some of you might know that the United Nations will try mo in a modestly to help the maybe modestly to help the civic organizations dealing with the sexual and uh, reproductive health issues and United Nations will organize a training next year in June. Of course all of you will be invited and uh, of course uh, we will uh, discuss this jointly and the form of this training and we'll focus on the informative aspects and the content and interrelation of all rights to help you to strengthen your capacities in your work on this in this area and to uh, strengthen your capacities in advocacy or your other activities. Uh, this training will be offered by the UN United Nations Office for Human Rights in Geneva and we're also discussing with colleagues from the United Nations uh, here in Macedonia to also uh, distribute the findings and the results to a greater uh, to, to a greater public. I thank thank you, Sylvia, and for the for your in showing the interest and also providing this training in June of next year, and also to show interest in in the field of uh, reproductive and uh, uh, health sexual health issues. And hopefully, the organizations uh, that uh, would like to strengthen their capacities in the field of advocacy will use your uh, services. I'd like to give the floor now to uh, Snezhana Georgieva. I'm from the gynecological clinic. I, I have to say that concerning the risk of abortion, abortion is not a health risk problem in this country. We don't have any uh, risks or problems uh, with regards to the health of, wi health of women uh, when uh, talking about abortions. Professional will tell you that most of, most of the risks are related to infections. This is what is considered by professional, whether this is directly related to the abortion and the women might have sexual intercourse the next day and uh, then be infected or carry the infection. Even, and this might happen even though the professional, we as professionals have conducted uh, the whole procedure in the most professional manner. Uh, what about concerning injuries? Injuries occur because of animalysis. Maybe an animal, this animal was not uh, detected. This is very often. But we as professionals consider, or what we mean under risk, we think that every intervention carries a certain level of risk. If you take out a blood vessel, you may bleed out. Or maybe if you, if you have an ingrown nail, and even this procedure on an ingrown nail carries certain risks then any violent or invasive proce procedure carries a certain level of risk. But what will I, with all response, I claim that here in Macedonia we don't have a public health problem from abor with, regarding abortion. It was well detected that there will be problems when illegal abortions are, uh, are carried out and where we have women from other towns coming to Skopje, I don't want to wait for three Periods, then we might have health issues and risks. Concerning the funds, I really liked the analysis, but we are talking about fictional funds here. You did not find official data because these funds are fictional, because the money for intended for the malignant disease program, they are only declarative because our clinic has not received any funds for 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 procedures in this area. I don't know whether the family gynecologists have been allocated funds. These are all fictional funds. But even if they allow for these funds to be fictionally allocated for the interest of women, it would be nice. Thank you, Snezhana. Boyan, just a brief comment. Thank you for the comments and the additional uh, comment. In this 
Next month we will have another meeting for early detection of malignant diseases. I know we know that the government allocates these funds, but we know that they don't get to the public health institutions or the private institutions. Somebody else who would like to comment? I would uh, discuss uh, regarding budgets. I won't. Uh, discuss only this campaign, but these 36 million dinars are the basic funds agreed with the first contract, whether there will additional contracts, annexes to contracts. We can't find any information uh, even at the Public Procurement Bureau website. Maybe 36 million is not the right amount. It could be even higher. It's not just this campaign. There is uh, at least 10 campaigns and the budget and the total funds the government spends for these campaigns and promotions are 30, 360 million. The budget for the preventive health care is uh, redu has been reduced by 200,000 uh, in comparison to last year and the money have been allocated for campaigns without any goal, according to me. Another interesting uh, information is that the programs for preventive health care, there have been planned educational campaigns and promotional campaigns to overcome certain uh, impediments, and we have four uh, hundred thousand dinners for them, and uh, one and here only one campaign is three hundred and sixty million dinars. Regarding spending the funds, according to the Ministry of Health data, all uh, invoices from the clinic for gynecology and uh, obstetricians has have been paid. Thank you. Since I have information regarding the funding, we each year have a debt, we write off the debt for the programs for early detection of malignant diseases from the programs. Somebody else would like to comment? Other questions and comments? Drashko, mine is a comment and an attempt to get into the second part of the debate to discuss what can we do uh, further on, this summer we had a meeting of several organizations, we undertook certain activities, you remember when the law was being amended, but taking into account this research, what I from a higher perspective can interpret is that practically the 67% makes us peaceful yet. 67% of the population thinks that the, the woman makes a free choice, independent choice on abortion. But on the other hand, the high likability of the campaign, 53%, the large uh, rating, 61%, and the data which is not uh, fully valid how much the campaign has impacted our uh, additions because attitudes because I personally can respond to this uh, uh, in a difficult manner but 28% found the main message behind the campaign not to have abortion nowhere in the campaign we could see this uh, message uh, written down then to have many many uh, children in the families the the surreptitious message has been sent then there is the whole chaos regarding risks some of the people uh, part of the population panics about this intervention and these are divided 25 30 and so on there is no harmonization regarding this uh, attitude and what is of most concern is the impact the, on the demographic impact of the most vulnerable group, the poorest group, uh, caught in the religion norms and uh, the, um, uneducated. uneducated and young. These uh, messages for the young population from 15 to 25 years of age are sticky, they're related to the nation, they're promotive, high ideals and what can we do here? 
this is the question for us as uh, non-governmental organizations. We, as a first step, decided to have a mini social campaign, really mini campaign, with these slogans you can see on the slides, and which primarily have an objective to reach to the group of people that uh, know this story more or less to inform about the findings of the research but what comes what is a follow-up we need to sit down because in order to cover this population the target group and we where we have marked change of opinions uh, permanent uh, consequences can be assumed we need to sit down find consultants and uh, learn how to respond to a campaign to change the, the awareness. Um, similar to civil organizations that work on rights of women and stood against the amendment of the law and see what would be the next steps with funds we have available and the media that hear our voice. Thank you, Drashko. At the moment, uh, you can see the banners that will be part of this mini campaign. I would also like to ask you, those who are active with the social networks, to share wide as, as wide as possible, to have a, a proactive uh, uh, position regarding the right of choice. Does somebody else? want to comment on this. I know Dr. Filipovsky Dr. Snežana in the research of the researcher I think there was a question missing after these campaigns and the videos you should have asked whether you, when you are moneyless, without any conditions to raise a child, would have an abortion of an unplanned pre uh, pregnancy. Whether will you be remain pregnant or you will make, you will perform an abortion. Yeah, it, it's an interesting thing. Whether when you are faced with a situation where you don't have money to raise a child, you will make an abortion or give birth to the child and throw it on the street. I think uh, this idea was recognized by some respondents because this can be found in the part of in the segment of replies where the respondents say that the women are aware of whether they can have financial burden to raise a child therefore the those that think that uh, women have right to choose are aware of this aspect dr filipovsky Boyan already introduced me, Dushko Filipovsky, doctor from the Association of Private Gynecologists and Obstetricians, uh, Family Gynecologists. Uh, it's a beautiful research and a study by Biljana and Borian. I would like to congratulate them. It's a very good review. The first I would like to stress, because this is what is from a practical point of view interesting for us. I must say something first, at times when it's better not to think rather than say what you think, you will take my comment uh, with a reserve. 55 respondents from the family gynecologists you should have covered also the hospital gynecologists and the private gyneco uh, hospitals. Even if you uh, asked 100% of the gynecologists in Macedonia, the results would have been very similar or the same. Let's talk about this part, covering gynecologists. Risks from legal abortion. Uh, it's not risky. 31 and 45% somewhat risky. If you 
sum them up, you will see that the risks from legal uh, expert abortion is not high. This is uh, overlaps with the opinion from Dr. Georgieva from the Clinic for Gynecology and Obst Obstetrics. We can say that with the techniques of making abortions and the preventions, the, pre the, the preparing, the techniques and the advice after the abortion, we don't have problems here. We only have problems ha the, uh, regarding the degree of implementation of the recommendations by the patients. The second part, I will analyze step by step, the second part about the information gynecologists have. We are informed, we are 100% informed. We were again informed in, uh, by insistence of the Ministry of uh, Health, all gynecologists from Macedonia were gathered to be informed again about the law on abortion that has come into force and particularly regarding the penalties and the violations of not implementing this law. Not 93, 100% of the gynecologists know what has been in, uh, placed into force. Impact of the legal amendments to the free access to abortion. Some 71 and 24 and you will see what results you will have. You will have a result that yes, the access to abortion will be impeded, but this data, 100% reason for reduction of the protection of female health with the new law. The illegal abortion will be stimulated with these modifications to the law, the illegal abortion will be stimulated. We will have abortions in Kaczanik, in Vranje, Petric, in some uh, suspicious uh, offices, garages, etc. We won't have legal abortions professionally performed in appropriate conditions. I would also like to stress out, I'm a lawyer, I'm not a... I'm a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I cannot comment the legal aspects, but I must get into two or three parts of the law which are very dangerous. One, first let me say, the law on abortion, termination of pregnancy, such as it is now, with its provisions, points out to the most cruel termination of pregnancy. This method of termination of pregnancy exists I don't know where. The world, if it knew we have legal grounds for termination of pregnancy in this way, they will terminate our diplomas. There are very fine, uh, uh, sophisticated, less traumatic methods for termination of pregnancy, such as medical abortion and endometrial aspiration. These are methods for termination of pregnancy which do not require anesthesia, uh, transfusions, only controlled by a gynecologist from the family, the family gynecologist, not the hospital gynecologist. There is an additional two or three provisions, particularly the penalties that lead us into a dilemma and danger, jeopardy. Uh, we have gynecologists, family in Rostushe, in Sveti Nikolai, in Berovo, Pekčevo, Doiran. Uh, these are family gynecologists. The uh, spontaneous, spontaneous abortions. abortions happen everywhere, not just in Skopje, on the clinic, but in Stip. There is a department of gynecologists or in the larger centers. It, happen, it happens in all areas. What will my colleague do in such a small place when we have a patient who is bleeding from a, a spontaneous abortion? The law says the doctor cannot touch her 
five years prison, three years prison, 50,000 euros penalty, license uh, withdrawn. They cannot touch her, touch her. But until they transport her to the first medical center when she can have the abortion uh, completed, what is the risk of this transport? Can the woman die? Yes, very easily. And now what are we doing? Who will be responsible? The, the person that did not undertake any activities, the one that prescribed such a law, the one that proposed such a law, or the ones that adopted this law. Whether the parliament will be responsible for this, whether the proposers will be responsible in such a case, or the doctor will be responsible because he, un he or she didn't undertake any measures. Can this happen? Yes. Yes, they will say, according to the law on life-threatening situation of persons, you did not, did not do anything. But on the other hand, according to the law on abortion, the doctor cannot do anything. Uh, to speak along these lines, there was a proposed amendment concerning this situation. It was proposed by the... Member of Parliament from Vamaro Dapamane, the, the ruling party, Pachemsky, and this was uh, amendment was rejected. An explanation was that uh, gynecologists will use this uh, as a basis for performing all other types of abortions. I can respond to this also. Gynecologists can, and if I want to find a way to circumvent the law, to find a loophole, I can find ways. An abortion, which is carried uh, an ongoing abortion, it's not something that is uh, can be uh, hidden or cannot be organized. It's a different matter when we have a planned abortion conducted uh, in a, at an exact uh, set time and period. And if you follow the uh, code list uh, uh, under Z30 uh, and is Z30 zero is uh, counseling Z30. Uh, 23 sterilization, Z30 is uh, menstrual extraction, a diaphragm. So all these codes have all the different types of uh, preventive measures. This, ended, uh, this is aspiration, which is as, as, uh, abortion. So if I want to conduct an abortion, an illegal one, then I can just put the code Z Z30, uh, comma, uh, slash 3, so-called mini-abortion. So here, we're not talking about uh, finding loopholes in the law. We are discussing to draft a law which will be a functional, modern, uh, also recognized uh, by the world. So it, there's no need to invent, uh, uh, invent new things. We can use experiences from other countries. If you want to move uh, into the category of countries uh, with... Uh, severe impacts from implementing such a law, then we can join the a group of these countries. But if we want to strive towards uh, the uh, highly developed and uh, mid, uh, middle, mid developed uh, and developed countries, then we should uh, accept and adhere to methods uh, developed and adopted and implemented by developing countries, uh, highly developed countries. The Macedonian School of Gynecologists is one of the better schools and faculties in uh, Europe. We are not illiterate. We are not uh, ignorant. We are uh, professionals in the field of gynecology. The second research, I will answer all your questions uh, concerning practical experiences and working in, the, uh, in outpatient wards with patients and and concerning all practical daily work. My analysis is that 30 or 35 percentages of first uh, pregnancies are terminated, mostly due to economical reasons. 50 to 70 percent of second uh, pregnancies are terminated. Then, termina third uh, pregnancy is terminated uh, at a level of more than 80 percent. So, you need to know this. Then, concerning the second section, the use of contraception. 
it is good, it is well intended, uh, the use of perception, but we only country in Europe and in the region which does not include any contraceptive uh, on the positive list of medications. The only country. All other countries have at least one, some countries have two contraceptives on the positive list of medications, some include all of the contraceptives, unlike Macedonia, which does not include any uh, contraceptives. We have repeated and we have addressed the Ministry of Health, the Health Fund, they don't need to have campaigns to defeat uh, uh, cancer. We only need one campaign, choose, all women should choose family gynecologists and we will take over from there, from there, the preventive care of women. Concerning preventive uh, uh, examinations, Jana will discuss this, uh, we don't need to overlap, repeat, this is the way uh, the situation is and how things function in our country. So these are my remarks and my discussion on today's topic. Probably we'll continue talking about what should we do now and in the future. Thank you Dr. Filipovsky for your extensive discussion uh, which you pro and you provided additional findings and experiences in the practice and uh, all the possible uh, types of uh, termination of abortion. Are there any of the other participants would like to discuss or comment on the presentations and the uh, findings from the research researchers? Because I would like to, con if there are any other comments, uh, I would like to continue on the topic mentioned by Drashko uh, and Dr. Filipovsky also discussed this. What might be the possible future steps and strategies? How can civic organizations to be more proactive for, in all, for the in, in, uh, for the purpose of uh, defending and promoting uh, the already. Uh, already acknowledged and gained uh, gained standards for protection of uh, women's health. So we could have a brainstorming on this topic. So I would like to open the floor. This, uh, my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion, not of the organization which I represent. As a politicologist, I think what is most important to do now is to distinguish between the different measures that might lead us to the achievement of the goal, such as uh, reduction of the number of abortions. But the number of abortions uh, as a topic that we want to target is quite extensive and broad. What we need is to um, uh, classify and, and distinguish and to make a division in sections. Maybe we uh, the uh, use of uh, putting contraceptives on the on the positive list of medication, this is good, but we need a separate strategy how to uh, achieve this and how to lobby for having a positive a con a contraceptive on the positive list. A second possible aspect is promotion and informing on the medical on medical abortion. This is also a separate strategies that might contribute to achieving the goals that we want to achieve. Promoting sexual education can contribute to, uh, to this goal. But uh, the topic of sexual education is quite broad, whether we sh will focus on informing a, a group of people, uh, an age group from eight, 15 to 18 years of age, through informal education conducted by NGOs, or uh, we go through the schools and inform them through, uh, about uh, sexual education through the teachers. This is a separate strategy that we need to develop. So these types of research are wonderful and very useful for a certain uh, group of people who are interested in these topics, who want to discuss on them, but the a group of the population that was already mentioned, for, such as uh, people from the rural areas, as well, uh, who have most do dominant religious prejudices uh, concerning abortion and sexual practices. We need to uh, implement a different strategy with regards to this uh, group of the population, whether this will be done through the uh, contracting uh, uh, advisors or consultants. I think we need to distinguish between the different strategies and to discuss on each strategy differently. Concerning what sh we should do, what should be our follow-up activities? 
the whole discussion and the presentation have uh, left me with an impression that what the civic organizations do is based on facts, uh, evidences, uh, records and proofs. We need to oppose this uh, uh, to the moral moralizing uh, uh, populistic uh, campaigns uh, which have achieved their hidden agenda, which is of course dominant in the, uh, in the, in the messages conveyed in the videos, such as uh, uh, not to conduct abortion, to have a multiple children, uh, families with multiple children, and so on. We should look into what might be efficient to oppose these types of moralizing, uh, or the moralizing aspects uh, of these campaigns and videos. Because different uh, ideas are merged in, uh, in, uh, for the purpose of health, uh, purportedly and to prevent the risk from abortion on the face uh, and then uh, they promote another agenda uh, under the surface we talk about the risks that uh, that may maybe are not exist or not but I don't know whether we'll be able to reach the population at this moment what will be the most efficient way to reach the general population and to convey our message we have a very real problem. We are faced with a very real problem. I don't remember the name of uh, uh, the previous speaker. In theory, yes, we can target these types of groups. We know which specific groups we need to target. Yes, this is very nice. But in reality, we can see, as uh, Dr. Fibrovsky already mentioned, it's better not to think, not to let alone express your opinions in public. This is the situation. Uh, as well as the possibilities to reach specific uh, uh, population groups, then we also have to consider which are the strategies uh, uh, which may be different to the already known uh, strategies that we can use to uh, use uh, such uh, different strategies to convey our message, to reach to them. I don't know if it, it would be proper or not, uh, whether I have, uh, this is the proper way to express it, uh, to see what is being used or abused or exploited by the other side, mm, I don't want to say the enemy, and to see, uh, to have such a insight so we can plan accordingly and to, to whom we should address. May, mm, I think that we may want to seek professional assistance. In this, uh, for this issue. Thank you, Susanna. Populism is not a bad thing, not a good thing. Populism is just t a tool. How we use it uh, is defined, uh, whether it's good or bad, by, by the goals that we want to achieve. This is well known by consultants, marketing consultants, because there have been many good laws that have been adopted through use of populist populism campaigns. Okay, maybe not. Uh, maybe populism is not, but moralizing is definitely negative. Uh, Silva Pesic. Maybe I will uh, sound biased uh, because I work. I work on human rights, but I think that response to moralizing or any other other t uh, tools or uh, activities used are uh, p putting in front human rights because human rights are a legal obligation of the state. They need to comply and implement uh, the provisions and rights which have been uh, accepted by the government, included in the constitution, and the government needs to meet its obligations. And whichever party or individuals are in power, there are specific, clearly defined legal obligations prescribed by the constitution, by law, by international legislation, what principles need to be complied with and followed, what activities uh, need to be carried out in certain areas. Here we're talking about <coughs> women and uh, f fighting against their discrimination, women's health. So these are not abstract themes which can be fr freely, which are subject to free interpretation to an extent that you can have differences. 
whether in certain cases abortion is desi is desirable, in certain cases it won't be desirable. There might be only differences in, uh, in shades, uh, nuances on how to implement policies, but in practice uh, there are principles and provisions that need to be implemented. This is your basis, this is your strong point uh, which you can use in addressing whether certain measures are uh, proper or not. And what is not mentioned uh, and not raised, unfortunately, and this is accountability and also accountability when laws are violated because the legislation in the field of human rights provides possibility to all of us that any violation of rules uh, uh, which are accepted by the country then if you break if you violate uh, such legal obligations then you can be taken in front of court and be published just like the doctor can be penalized or fined then the responsible uh, individuals who have uh, directed the, the doctor uh, can also face punishment and are accountable. So this legislation and human rights legislation provide you with maybe not a neutral but maybe a more a better uh, a better basis which is uh, broadly accepted because it is uh, legislation uh, accepted or taken uh, by the state itself because otherwise then if these rules are not complied then a government's commitments uh, are changed Boren, when you mentioned uh, and when you talking when you when you spoke about women's rights and you invited all the organizations we also have to also speak about the rights of men of uh, in the whole story and maybe one of the ways to succeed in uh, uh, in succeeding in your message is to uh, for the story to include everyone because men are may, men are also have rights you also have uh, institutions professional organizations which you can address and you can attract as allies and to hear their views and opinions so the trend worldwide is to also include organizations which uh, deal which deal or to have a cooperation between the defenders of human rights uh, all institutions organizations work in different areas on different levels on the defense of human rights and also work with different groups Thank you, Silva. In our association regarding what are the positions of women and men, uh, we don't have uh, dominant men regarding liberal positions uh, in comparison to women. Yes, it's true. I think men have a more liberal, a bit more liberal attitudes regarding women, but uh, this data cannot be found here. Uh, they were not scared, uh, and it's not their body, maybe. That's why. Uh, and the fact that we have male representatives from the organizations. Um, I don't know if you experienced it, this as a primary female question because it's directly linked to female health, but rep male representatives from the organizations are very welcomed. We probably have a separate meeting when Hera will have more precise uh, steps to uh, uh, act, but the first thing that comes on my mind is that we need to establish, not strengthen, but establish field work. We also discussed this with the Sir And the second thing is that it will be difficult to work on abortion in such a background because the issue on abortion has already been uh, scary. Uh, nobody discussed this. Uh, therefore, we need to to 
point out to the right of women, the independence of the women, young generations, because I think that the intervention should be in the base the baseline, the position of uh, the, le the woman in the kitchen. Uh, it's not directly abortion, but side uh, issues that can uh, be impacted and therefore the position on abortion is being changed. We need to work with young people that stand behind what they believe in, not just on abortion, but full let, I won't say more liberal, but a normal uh, approach to uh, experiencing life. These are two strategies. One to uh, have a field work uh, with rural people, with education, with training. You can't train somebody in contraception when they don't have access to contraception. But uh, with a general approach and the other one is with the urban young uh, population to design a completely uh, different strategy. These are two things that come to my mind first, but we will need some more time and we will, have a, we will need a separate meeting in order to discuss all of this. Thank you. I would like to add uh, something regarding the future steps so far the work in this field to improve reproductive health and rights of the population in Macedonia in the past years. Uh, somebody mentioned the civil organizations tried with different approaches, individual advocacy, data, joining the actions and the ma uh, a massive uh, joint action was undertaken with the adoption of the of the law, but uh, we are not very successful when we face a wall on the other uh, side uh, regarding all issues, particularly the reproductive rights. And what Drashko mentioned as a, an idea not to deal with abortion specifically, but provision of reproductive rights and health for each individual in Macedonia for women primarily, because this is uh, rather, uh, has more coverage regarding women. And, and the field work is uh, valid to raise the awareness of the vulnerable groups of young people, but we will need to find a strategy or to design a strategy, a different strategy for advocacy uh, to have institutional changes regarding access to contraception, um, safe legal abortion, and all other issues related to reproductive rights. We have attempted many things, but we almost uh, fail everywhere. And let's uh, continue to contemplate on this, how to change, how to find a strategy and how to start changing things. Thank you, Borian. Tanya? Hi to everyone, I'm Tanya Stankova from HERA, project coordinator on the mobile gynecological van, uh, which started in uh, April. We have experience particularly with information and accessibility to gynecological services for rural women. What I would like to emphasize is that currently we work in several regions where women don't have any access to uh, gynecological services. The villages are, uh, are at least 20 to 30 kilometers away from the first medical center that can offer such services. If we take into account that the fact that these are rural women that have their livelihoods in agriculture and similar activities, uh, we can all come to down to minimal time they have to devote to get to pass these 20 kilometers to get into the medical center. All uh, domestic obligations as a, as a woman from a rural area and uh, the, uh, their awareness on the advantages 
of going to a gynecologist regularly and why she should have such checkups. Uh, therefore, as a basic recommendations for the future could be improving the accessibility for rural women to improved health services, not to have new uh, uh, gynecological practices in each village. We have, uh, we are facing, we are facing a situation where such centers are, are being closed already, uh, centers that have worked for ages in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Somebody else? Dr. Snežana. Obviously, we should not understand that all these civil organizations will be against the government and the government should not experience them as oppressors, but as correctors. A nice tool is to have the researcher make an analysis uh, of this law regarding the impact of, on females that have been counseled. How many of them uh, gave up from uh, performing abortion? This will be a tool to persuade the government that we should work on reproductive health and rights to promote contraception, uh, finally education regarding sexual health, because only a few know, know are informed about sexual health. They don't know at all what this is. Therefore, this tool should be useful. Look at this. The law is here, but what is the effect? The women gave up? No, they didn't. We need to do something else in order to reduce this re abortion rate. Not a restriction rate, no abortion, but a measure that will be a response regarding sexual behavior. Silva, you wanted to add something. I'm sorry that I'm discussing so much, but I think that anybody's efforts should be directed towards the ones that need it the most, need the most. I'm aware that our government know their obligation, know the provisions, know the international standards. However, those that do not know what is following and what is the consequence are the people. Many common people, which are right holders, have no idea what will be a consequence and what are they deprived of rather than have it as an everywhere, everyday uh, uh, things that take for, for granted. Uh, in our work as well, we are very informed about the work of the government and we are working with the government and the obligations that need to be met. But when it comes to a certain situation after decades of efforts uh, working with certain groups of people, it is worth to think about what may happen if people knew what are they deprived of uh, and which is their uh, entitlement. After all of this, let's see what can we do. Maybe I can recommend something as well. Let's start with the fact that the survey clearly implies that the number of illegal abortions will be 100% increased. Uh, 100%. Second, taking this data and the fact that the law on termination of pregnancy imposes serious risks, legal consequences, for the 
person that will find themselves in a situation prevented to intervene regarding spontaneous abortion. But in a non-aggressive, peaceful manner, we should require adaptation of the law on termination of pregnancy and adaptation towards European standards. Because as it is now, it is a seriously, in some provisions, is seriously dangerous. And the second thing, and let's not repeat ourselves, funds for contraceptions should be allocated. This is clear. It's clear that we should have at least one contraceptive on the positive list, but not a contraceptive of any generation or group, but a modern con con uh, contraceptive uh, suitable for the population that will use it. The access to health institutions, this is a topic for a wider debate and an additional comment. Generally speaking, the state allocates only a few uh, funds for the female health. This is an undisputable fact presented and the situation is such 50 dinars per month for the reproductive health of a female, or 500, 600 dinars annually in comparison to other categories, children, pensioners, let's say, for pensioners, 180 dinars per month. And with all the rights, it's a risk group, the pensioners, the ret retired citizens. For children, 180 dinars for, per month. I agree. It's a risk group. For the women, only 50 dinars. Women are not risky patients, particularly not in the reproductive period, 18 to 45 years. There's no births then, there's no cancer then. Nothing happens with women in these age uh, groups. The gynecological health in Macedonia, particularly in, in the reproductive period, including pregnancy and Lack of pregnancy, 14 to 45 years of age. The gynecological health of the women is debased. 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 I wouldn't like to get into uh, intim intimidating other things. We should work on these uh, problems about the uh, gynecological health of women. Dr. Filipovsky, thank you. Could somebody else discuss or would like to discuss or we can provide certain conclusions in brief? In brief, as I already said, this research is wonderful. We need more similar studies tangible to this issue and it's great that we agree what is the right thing to do and how to do it in an intellectual, high style of discussion. But we are not discussing how to persuade the intellectuals in Macedonia or Serbia, but how to get into an unequal fight with a political factor. And we can get into a fight only in a lawful, uh, uh, lobbying way. I can only say this as a final comment. I don't see any other speakers raising their hands. Briefly, and concerning the last item of the agenda of our working session, yeah, concerning what to, what, uh, what to do as follow-up, what are future steps and strategies, I will summarize what were the ideas uh, that uh, came out of the discussion from all of you, that we need uh, specific separate strategies to address uh, specific uh, 
uh, issues not only related to the right of choice to abortion, but uh, rights uh, related to uh, sexual and uh, reproductive health uh, uh, issues. Uh, there, there was a suggestion for having contraceptives on the positive list of medication, how to better inform, have better information on medical abortion as well as sexual education in schools. However, however on the other hand, we, we need completely different strategies when to uh, work uh, in rural areas or with uh, uh, a, a population group which have a different religious background uh, and how to address uh, this specific group groups. It was also mentioned and maybe we need to pay attention more and to have additional research and uh, and to to uh, in, to get uh, more support from experts and advisors how to fight better with these such moralizing campaigns. What would be the effective tools in the fight against these types of campaigns? As well as uh, we also, uh, the, also the need for consultants and experts which might help us in this, as Rasko already mentioned. Uh, we had discussion on the promotion of human ra rights and constitutional provisions uh, uh, guaranteeing the right of women to decide by themselves on their reproduction as well as on the general promotion of human rights and attitudes towards human rights. And of course, all the activities that we undertake need to be need to equally target men and women without having isolated uh, approaches, but uh, our approach should be to all. Uh, all stakeholders, both men and women, uh, on this issue, as well as to involve NGOs with uh, va various profiles as much as possible. So not only organizations which work in the areas of health and human rights issues, but also work on a variety of topics uh, uh, related to, to the various uh, areas of work. What is, in, what is my opinion is that we as NGOs, we need to work more on our field work. We need to go out in the field, in the rural areas. Maybe we should intensify our work there. Research has shown that that population is most subject to changing their attitudes, unlike the urban population. Of course, this is also related to their economic position and the social conditions that they live in and I think what is really important and significant because it was mentioned, raised by a, a many of you it is very difficult, we already know it is very difficult to directly work on this topic abortion maybe we should also work indirectly uh, through other issues that we will raise such as empowering women, independence of women uh, uh, more advocacy of uh, women's rights and this will all help us to achieve uh, that uh, women should have the exclusive right to abortion as a means of planning uh, their pregnancies. Of course, we also need to work on strategies of, uh, uh, directed at the youth and you, the youth and young people should be a, a target group of great interest for all of us in the future because the research of HERA shows one of the target groups which uh, considers most uh, that women have made a wrong choice so uh, by using by performing abortion that one of the mo groups uh, having this uh, attitude was uh, the, uh, were the young people considering advocacy as Borian mentioned we are facing a wall by, uh, raised by decision makers, policy creators concerning integ integrating any of our initiatives uh, based on our experiences. But advocacy is a long-term uh, process and we need to continue with our efforts. We need to d uh, develop a strategy to use uh, a variety of instruments based fact-based instruments and evidence-based uh, uh, instruments because this is uh, how we base our work on facts and evidences and we also think that the, our policies need to be integrated even though in our uh, environment uh, this is not properly accepted or uh, and we need to look into how sh we should continue maybe we use a little bit more uh, 
rougher, uh, maybe other types of methods or uh, different types of methods. So this is uh, an idea that was raised because we have been raised and educated uh, in a different, uh, in different principles as NGOs. Maybe the future strategies that uh, would not directly convey uh, the right of abortion as a right of choice. Maybe uh, future strategies may include what uh, Dr. Filipovsky said that uh, based on the funds per capita received by gynecologists, the uh, women's health is most underestimated concerning the no uh, amount of funds. Maybe we should invest in uh, reproductive health of women. And if we, if uh, more investment are made in the reproductive health of women, then also her general health will be improved. I also I wouldn't agree concerning the adaptation of EU regulations in our legislation, uh, because at the moment there is no European harmonized policy on arborsy. I think this is fortunate in my opinion, because if we would promote this uh, type of uh, uh, EU policies, then maybe this EU harmonization, then maybe they would use the most restrictive and rigorous uh, abortion po uh, legislation policies, such as the ones in Ireland and Malta, which are highly developed European countries. And in our opinion, they have uh, some of the most restrictive methods. Ireland even does not allow for abortion to be formed in cases or when the health of women is uh, jeopardized and is life-threatening. And even and, be, and even if there, if abortion was legal in Ireland, then there would be doctors who, who would do it because of, based on moral and religious uh, uh, religious uh, uh, beliefs. So we need to take into account the social and uh, economic uh, context in in our country, because uh, during the adoption of this law, the proposers uh, uh, wanted to explain that the three days of waiting period and counselling is something which is in correlation with other with the practices in other European countries such as Germany and the Netherlands. Yes, they have such provisions, but on the other hand. The social and economic context in those countries is much different. We cannot compare to Germany and Netherlands with regards to the introduction of such a restrictive measure. However, with, uh, considering the fact that these uh, restrictive uh, provisions were introduced 20 or so years, imposed on us 20 or so years ago, uh, it's another fact. Considering some of the recommendations, access to health uh, services is one major issue, especially uh, access to services uh, for reproductive health. We are aware that the number of gynecologists has been reduced uh, geographically on, on the overall territory of Amazonia. The number of gynecologists is reduced, but uh, what, uh, one of the activities of HERA, which is the mobile gynecological van or ambulance, is one possible way to improve uh, the access to such uh, health services. I'd like to give the floor to Drashka. I would like to have only uh, raise only two points. I was reading the recommendations and hearing the recommendations, I gained the impression that we accept, uh, we take a situation for granted. In, in this case, there are funds spent. SMA have a different, uh, different experience, but we need to have partnership with other organizations which follow and monitor the spending of tax, uh, taxpayer funds because obviously if we have uh, uh, if you have hiding and deletion of information from previous years then something is wrong in the whole in the world picture I would like another organization to uh, to uh, research this regarding the last videos to what extent can government conduct campaigns and film videos? which imposes violently the change of attitudes to the population and only one option is offered to the general population. We believe that the law on broad broadcasting law regulates uh, the issue on which uh, uh, advertisement advertising cannot uh, uh, change, cannot uh, lead uh, uh, the, gener uh, the general population. So this can be based on uh, 
on the uh, reaction against the brutal video that was uh, published and broadcast uh, previously in the year. If there aren't any other additional comments, we can conclude our work today. First of all, I'd like to thank our presenters, Bo Borian uh, Pavlovsky and Biljana Goroska, and of course, to, I'd like to thank you for your today's participation and discussion in our working session and meeting. I would like to invite you to the reception and cocktail, which I think will be served on the seventh floor, and there we can continue with an informal discussion. Thank you once again. <laughs>